Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material? The world position node. I fired up a quick little example here. Now, if we look at this mesh that I have below us, it looks pretty good. We've got a texture lining up, but this isn't actually a mesh. This is two different cubes of two different sizes that actually look like they are one because our texture is seamlessly blending across. And we're using our world position node to do that. So what is our world position node? Well, it's pretty simple. It's going to give us back the current pixel in world space and where it's at, the position of it. And that's it. It's as simple as that. That's all it's going to give us back. Now it's going to give us back an X, Y, and a Z. And for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that off into an R and a G, or an X and a Y, and I'm going to go ahead and feed that into the UVs on a texture sample. What that's letting me do is, when I move this block, it's going to go ahead and update the texture in real time on this vertical portion here. And you'll notice, no matter what, it's going to match up with our texture. So that one texture itself, no matter how many different items we have on this set up, like you could duplicate this and we could move this over here and then we could scale this to two by two by, well that's 22, two by two by two. And we didn't need the second two. And then we move it again. Now we have three different items and they're all matching up properly. And they'll continue on like that. So the absolute world position has a few different options here. We have the including material shader offsets, excluding material shader offsets, and these are the world position version. Then you have the camera relative world position, which means it's going to adjust it based on where the camera is at. And if we were to go ahead and run this, we're not really going to see much of a difference here. What you're going to end up seeing is because our camera is changing, the texture itself is changing where its position is relative to the camera, but it's still going to tile properly. As you can see, we still have the appropriate tile across. Now you can ignore this part here. I'm going to show you how I fix this. It's something that requires more shader, uh, more material nodes. But for the most part, what we care about is the way I'm doing this. And if you notice, going up and down, I'm getting the same effect because my Z is not being affected in here. But based on my X and the Y, we're going to go ahead and pan it around. So depending on if you want the world position based on where the camera is, or if you want it just based on the world position itself, you can go ahead and adjust these settings. So in order to fix what I was talking about, what I've done here is I've created a much, much larger graph. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow both my X, my Y, and my Z to tile properly. So if you notice here, I can move this up and down. And you notice I have perfect tiling all the way around. And this one's a lot more complicated, but I'll just quickly run through it because why not? What we're doing here is we're getting the absolute world position, and then we're breaking out our X and our Y, and our Y and our Z, and our X and our Z. And then we're lerping between them and setting up that as our UV. And then we're using an if statement to determine whether or not it should be an X or a Y for the pixel normal. Basically, is it up and down or is it left and right? And then based on that, we're returning back how much of this mask should be applied. Long story short, basically, this is going to give you back something that gives you back a absolute world position aligned texture along your X, Y, and Z, as you can see here. My Z has a world aligned texture, and my X and a Y, yeah, look at the top part, has a perfectly good world aligned texture. So that's what our world position node is for. Uh, one thing I need to bring up, if you type in world position, you're actually going to find it all the way at the top under coordinates world position. Even though it says absolute world position, including material offset, or absolute excluding, or camera relative world position, those are just different settings on the actual world position node itself. If you were to look for the absolute, for example, you're not going to find it. If you look for the camera position, you're not going to find it as well. So keep that in mind. Even though it says absolute world position, this is the world position node. 
The absolute and the including part are just parts of it for the actual details. So the world position node, again, it gives you just simply where in world space this pixel is at. And that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.